Over the last three or six months, the amount of new equipment that has come out is incredible. New phones, new gimbals, new cameras, the list is endless. In terms of gimbals, you've had the DJI OM5, the Zune Smooth 5, the Kren M3, the G6 Max is still kicking about. Phones, you've got the entire iPhone 30 range, the new Samsungs, I mean, you name it, the list is endless. The Pocket 2, on the other hand, other than a couple of firmware updates, hasn't had many improvements at all. So it's only fair to ask in 2022, is this camera and gimbal still any good? There is nothing in the market today that packs so much quality in such a small body size. Look at how small this is, it's the size of a packet of tissues. And yes, if you add the doodle handle, it's a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger. And you can still fit it in your pocket, it's so, so light. And this is something that you learn to appreciate if you are used to filming with a DSLR or mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses for hours in a day because trust me that gets really really heavy and the same applies for a smartphone with a gimbal over time things do get heavy and the word compact doesn't really go hand in hand this is compact if you are someone that is a little bit shy or reserved or apprehensive about filming in public places this is fantastic because most times people won't even realize that you're there let alone that you're filming overall the quality that you get out of the pocket 2 is phenomenal and if quality is something that you are concerned about i've come up with a set of lads for when filming in the disney color space that you can just download i have the download link in the description below installing your software program and it's just drag and drop and your footage will look absolutely amazing In terms of image quality, some phones out there nowadays can record at 8K, which is an insane resolution. But most phones record at 4K. So the question you might ask yourself is, how does the Pocket 2 compare against the new range of phones, like for instance, the iPhone 13? Well, computational photography is the main thing and the main advantage that these phones have over the Pocket 2, because the Pocket 2 doesn't have computational photography. And the most obvious place where you see this is when you have an image with high contrast and in the background you have the sunlight hitting buildings or whatever else you have in the background. The Pocket 2 relies on the more traditional way of exposing an image with filters. So if you find yourself in those situations where there is a high contrast, a phone might be the better option. But one advantage of the Pocket 2 over any smartphones, and this is something that I really like, is the fact that the over sharpening is not as obvious as it is on any smartphone. Honestly, phones have gone a little bit too far on this, so in general terms, I still prefer the images that I get out of my Pocket 2 over any smartphone, except if I find myself in a situation with high contrast, as I mentioned before, because computational photography is just way too good. Smartphones these days come with multiple lenses. You have your ultra wide, your standard wide, your telephoto, and your selfie lens. And you might think that having those multiple lenses is an advantage, but the quality of the lenses is very different. And usually you have your main lens that is infinitely better than every other lens on the phone. The Pocket 2 on the other hand has the one single lens, but this is a really good lens and it's a lens that you can rely on. But the beauty of it is that you can turn the Pocket 2 around and you get the same quality whether you're vlogging or doing a standard filming. And you can add a relatively inexpensive wide-angle lens with ND filters and still the quality is amazing. So yes, you don't have as many lenses as the smartphone, but the lens that you have with the Pocket 2 is so good that honestly it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever the quality is still incredible you have as many focal lengths as any smartphone out there this is the stabilization that you get from an iphone 13 pro max and most smartphones these days are very similar they have really good onboard stabilization now, that is as long as you do this type of shot, which is talking heads or talking to a camera or holding the phone with both hands while filming something. The moment you try to do anything that is a little bit more creative, like uh, going from the ground up or doing some sort of panning or tilting or both at the same time, things start to look a bit shaky. Now, to make matters worse, if you use a third-party app like Filmic Pro, ProTech or whatever the flavor, 
you may not get that good stabilization anyway because the really good stabilization happens on the default camera app and on an iphone the camera app is atrocious it's horrendous it's piece of shit man <laughs> it really is this on the other hand is the quality that you can expect to get out of the dji pocket 2 which i personally think is infinitely better because you can get the same stabilizing quality whether you use the standard wide or whether you attach a wide angle lens or even if you zoom in all the way this is the level of functionality that no smartphone can reach and even if you use a smartphone gimbal with a phone you're looking at exponentially larger size so that's something that you need to assess whether you are okay with that or whether you prefer something that is so small and tiny as this thing and you can do pretty much anything you want the pocket 2 can do it with some gimbals, they sometimes prioritize size over quality and when you get into awkward or funny angles, that's when you start to see the limitation. Another advantage of the Pocket 2 is that you can attach any filters, accessories and you don't need to recalibrate or do any adjustments whatsoever, nothing. This thing just works, in two seconds you're up and, you're up and running. And another advantage is that you can use this as an action camera and forget about using that with a mirrorless camera or a gimbal with a smartphone. Let me show you. The new iPhone 13 phones have cinematic mode and this is like computational photography on steroids. The Pocket 2 doesn't have computational photography, let alone the cinematic mode. No ifs or buts, it's the way it is, and there is nothing you can do about it. Maybe this is something that uh, DJI can address in the Pocket 3, but at the moment, you don't have the cinematic mode. Now, saying that, I did recently a video where I showed you how you can do this in post. I leave a link in the description of the video if you're interested. A cinematic mode in the iPhone is far from being well implemented. You can't lock exposure and white balance, which means that the moment you start moving the phone, things start to change in your image and it just doesn't look good. So even though you don't have cinematic mode in the Pocket 2, I still prefer the Pocket 2 because you can lock exposure and white balance and you can do static shots just as good as moving shots. Vlogging is all about trying to record as much as you can, including yourself, without drawing too much attention. Try to do that with a smartphone and a gimbal. <laughs> the moment you pull one of those, people are gonna be looking at you. With the Pocket 2 on the other hand, it's so small that you literally go unnoticed. Most people won't even realize that you're there. The advantage that you have also by having such a small camera body is that you can decide to be as discreet as you want with the LCD screen at the front, or if you feel that you need a bigger image, you can simply attach a smartphone and you get the best of both worlds. Not only that, but if you need to add any accessories like lenses or filters, it's really easy and you don't need to spend time recalibrating or making any adjustments. Try to do that with a gimbal. The moment you add a lens or a filter, the whole balance goes out of whack and you need to recalibrate. And let's not forget audio. The Pocket 2 runs circles around anything any smartphone and gimbal can offer with a creative combo and a do-it-all hand. Honestly, the functionality that you get is phenomenal and this leads me directly to my next point. Audio is the one area where the Pocket 2 is so far ahead to anything any camera or smartphone can offer these days. For the simple fact that you can get yourself the creative combo it comes with this doodle handle and this wireless microphone or transmitter and this is going to transform the quality of the audio that you can record with the Pocket 2. This acts as a wireless microphone, you can also attach a lapel mic to use it as your wireless microphone and also as a remote on-off switch which is amazing and to have functionality like that with a smartphone or a camera you're looking at adapters, accessories, cables, and things start to get really complicated. With a dual handle, you just attach it to the Pocket 2, and that's that. You just transform the Pocket 2 into a wireless receiver. And not only that, but as an addition, you can also wirelessly monitor the Pocket 2 for both audio and video, which is amazing. On this size, it's incredible. To me, sound is one of my favorite things for the Pocket 2 because it's so easy to get clean and good audio. 
try and do that with a smartphone or a camera and it can be a real pain. In terms of low light, smartphones have come a long way. The quality that you get out of these phones is incredible. I am not a Samsung user, I'm an iPhone user. With the iPhone 12 was incredible, with the 13 range, the low light capabilities are incredible. And yet, despite all of that, you still have this horrendous lens glaring or flaring, and there is nothing you can do. Honestly, it drives me insane. The Pocket 2, on the other hand, is phenomenal in low light. And you don't have to worry as to whether you use the ultra wide lens or the standard wide. The same quality applies whether you use one lens or the other. You know, it's as simple as popping a lens and you have a really good either wide or ultra wide and you don't have to worry about this lens glaring or flaring that you got with the iPhone. I don't know, what do you think? Which one do you think looks better? I personally think the low light capabilities of the DJI Pocket 2 are much better than anything in the market today in this price range. And that includes the smartphones, as far as I'm aware. If you're into vlogging, this is amazing because you carry a little wide angle lens that you can fit in your pocket. And you don't need to worry about having one lens better than the other. You just literally pop the little wide angle lens and you get a really good low light capabilities and you can just for yourself I'm in a state just with a few lamps and look how well lit I am and I don't have to worry about lens flaring or glaring if I was on a smartphone like an iPhone you would have all these green dots all over the screen I am sort of blogging in the same spot as I was just now with the DJI Pocket 2 and if I turn around you can probably see the glaring or the green dots that I told you about and it's really really annoying and there is nothing you can do about this it's so irritating and you get them whether you're doing vlogging, whether you're doing standard filming. This is the one thing that is so off-putting about smartphones and in the iPhone in particular. What I is not something you want to be nearby when using a camera or video equipment. This is just as true for the Pocket 2 as it is for any camera or gimbal. Now saying that, if you talk about smartphones, they're pretty much waterproof these days. That is as long as you don't do anything stupid. The Pocket 2, on the other hand, is nowhere near close in Africa. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't dare filming with the Pocket 2 in anything other than light rain or drizzle. And this is a real shame because some of the coolest and most interesting shots that you could possibly get happen to be under the rain or in wet conditions. Gimbals are not waterproof either, but somehow you feel you can get away with a lot more for the simple fact that you don't have the camera electronics inside. This is an area where DJI has to really look into in the future for the Pocket 3 because it sucks really to have to either stay indoors when it rains or having to use a smartphone. Smartphones can last for a day or two sometimes, gimbals can go on for 8 to 16 or 18 hours or more. So when the longest you can go on with the Pocket 2 is around an hour and a half or two hours at best. Well, what can I say? I mean, this is the one area where the Pocket 2 falls flat on its eyes. You can use a smartphone holder that is also a power bank and you can work out ways to plug the Pocket 2 to a power bank in between locations, in between takes. But the whole thing is a real pain in the ass. Personally, I'd love it if the battery would last longer, of course. But like everything in life, you learn to use what you get, and the same applies here. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, you have seen an iPhone and working on a Mac computer, whatever the flavor, the workflow is amazing. It's one of the things that you learn to value so much. I mean, how easy it is to transfer videos, files, photos, whatever. This is probably one of the reasons why it's so hard to move away from Apple and its ecosystem once you get sucked into it. But Pocket 2 being a camera and a gimbal should have a better workflow. Maybe the dual handle could pair with a computer or Macs for data transfer, but the workflow at the moment is such a pain. So much so that sometimes connecting the Pocket 2 to a computer through a cable just doesn't work. And that means you need to take the micro SD card out and let me tell you, that is one of the most infuriating experiences in my life. Because unless you have long nails, you better have something to push that tiny card back into the slot. Honestly, infuriating is probably an understatement here. 
But despite all of that, all this process happens once the filming has been done. So painful as it is, you always have a bit more time to moan and winch about it than when filming on location, when you need everything to just work. And in that regard, for when it matters, which is when it comes to filming, the Pocket 2 is reliable and performs amazingly good. But honestly, DJI, you really need to look into this. So is the Pocket 2 still worth it in 2022? I still think the Pocket 2 is a fantastic camera gimbal. The quality that you get from such a tiny size is still incredible. And yes, DJI could have released one or two more firmware updates and improved on what's already a great camera. But despite all of that, it still offers more and better functionality than most compact camera equipment out there. And if you're wondering how easy or difficult it is to use the Pocket 2, you can watch this video here where I give you the best settings for filming with the Pocket 2 so you can be sure that you get the best possible results. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one.